What's going on everybody? We're back at E-Bikes USA, Cherry Creek area in Denver, Colorado. Today we're checking out new e-bikes from Diamondback. Super excited about this. Houseman's here with me and this, they're one of the first dealers to get the Diamondbacks, which is pretty cool. We've got them all lined up here. Union 2, Union 1, the, what was that one, the Current? Current. And then the Response? I'm sorry, Response. Or no, Response, Current. Um, all right. Still trying to learn all of these. So yes. Houseman is just absolutely jazzed about all these bikes. So yeah, tell us about this. You just got these, what, like last week? Is that right? Well, two weeks ago. We're very excited. Welcome back, Tyson. Uh, Diamondback is getting back into the electric bike business and they are elevating their brands and they have come up with some great products for us. Of test running these, I can't speak enough about them, how well they're built. Uh, I can go over some of the features and so forth. And first and foremost, all these four bikes feature Bosch's Gen 4 speed motors, 28 miles an hour. Um, I'm very excited to have mountain bikes and commuters and a gravel bike with 28 miles an hour bikes. Um, the other thing that's great with Gen 4, 85 newt meter of torque. That's oh, yeah. one of the, the highest monsters. torque levels we have uh, from Bosch. So that's pretty exciting. And they're quite a bit lighter too, aren't they? Down to, I think it's like around right around six pounds uh, on those Gen 4s. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're lighter motors. The battery packaging is great. That's the other thing about these bikes. The batteries are all integrated. They're obviously removable. Uh, and we will go over each model. Yeah, that's very sleek. It is not just the motor that's lighter. These are lightweight bikes for the performance that they produce. Uh, we're talking in the 40s, high mm. 40s. Uh, so that's that's pretty exciting. That is, yeah. I mean, it you know, especially compared to the bikes I've been reviewing recently, like the Sondor's LX, super heavy, uh, uh, you know, about 90 pounds there. So these are much, much lighter. And you get a ton of different sizes here too. We've got a couple extra larges here and a couple larges. And they, uh, is it small through extra large? Yeah, they, they come in a small through extra large and the, the geometries are designed to accommodate someone as short as five foot five and all the way to six foot six, six foot seven. So I think you will yeah. enjoy finally test riding a bike that fits you. Oh yeah, that's oh, gonna be great. They even say it like right on the frame there, you can see, you know, it says the XL, six one to six four for the Union. And you know, they've got the class stickers and everything on here, really premium job here. And it looks like they've really done a nice job with their packaging, really nice integrated cables and class three for all of them. That's awesome. Especially if you're gonna be riding around a city like Denver, you wanna be able to keep up with traffic and ride safely that is awesome you know we've got fenders on the commuters here yeah I mean such a sweet package so you've test ridden all of them do you have a, do you have a favorite yet I love them all yeah <laughs> that's my problem <laughs> that's why I have so many bikes uh, the, the thing about these bikes are uh, for one it's not a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. you do get them um, we can custom fit each person a small medium large extra large the other thing about it is the quality of components. They are producing some of the best values for the components you get with these bikes, with that battery and that motor system. That's what makes it a good value, truly good value. Integrated batteries, the graphics look great, uh, and they've done a great job distinguishing each product. They're designed for a different consumer and what they're planning to do with it. Uh, there are two commuters, Union 1 and Union 2. And there are some significant differences between the two models. Even though they both feature the same motor, Union 2 has a 500 watt hour battery versus 400 watt that comes on Union 1. Union 2 has a better brake package. Even though the Tectero uh, Orion that comes on Union 1, it's a very nice uh, brake system. Union 1 comes with the Purian display. Oh yeah, that's definitely a big difference. Yeah, this is the this is their entry level, which is probably better than most other bicycles systems. This is a Purian display, whereas everything else comes with the kiosk, which is removable, they're Bluetooth enabled, and, and we can also upgrade these as Bosch makes significant changes to their system. Yeah, the, the just firmware updates and stuff, and. And I love the Kiax too, it's just so, it's so small and I mean I like the Perion because it's small and kind of out of the way and they just took that up another step with the that, Kiax, right. it's a great display. That's right, now the Union 2 comes with, it, it, they both come with the fenders on rack but Union 2 also comes in with built-in lighting system which is Union 1 doesn't have that. Oh yeah, it doesn't have them at all. Those look like, uh, what is that? Uh, 
Lazine Light E-Bike 500. Right, I mean, that's 500 lumens. That's pretty bright. Yeah, yeah it's not too bad. Bright. And it's got, uh, looks like it's integrated into the fender back here on the rear, so check that out. It's uh, really sturdy fenders too, nice and wide. And the light runs right down there. And it's, it's low enough that if you have stuff on the rack, hopefully that's not gonna be obstructing it. And you know, they got racks too. Like these are solid commuting choices. Solid commuter choices. And, and when I look at the, you know, the details, attention to detail, the locks on these are made by Abus. So not only that's a quality lock, but in case the consumer wants the rider loses their keys, as long as they hang on to the card code, mm -hmm. we can replace those keys very easily. I mean, that, that's a great feature in my mind. Yeah, and Ibis does the, what do they call it? The key to like as that's well. Right. So that's right. uh, if you get a different lock, uh, you can get bike locks from Abus and have them set up so you can use the same key that you use for your bike battery for your lock. That we only have to carry one key, which is really nice. You don't have a whole bunch of stuff jangling around on your keychain. Yeah, the other, the other model that I'm very jazzed about is this response. This is a hardtail mountain bike. Uh, talking to the good people at Diamondback, they were telling me that this bike is designed for someone who spends 70% of their time commuting, riding in the city, maybe commuting to work, but they can also take it on the trails on the weekends. So this is a very nice package. The other thing that I like about these three models, they come with Schwalbe Supermoto, e-bike rated tires, great smooth rider. For lightweight trails, these tires are great. And if, and if somebody wants to do more advanced and aggressive trail riding, we can easily replace those with one of the Schwalbe, Nobby Neck, the Trail, or any other brand of trail rated tires. So that's a great mountain bike. Now on the mountain bike, it also comes with Megoro brakes. That's a huge upgrade. Same display, same motor, 500 watt uh, hour battery, but you get rock shocks. <coughs> Rock shock suspension and Megoro brakes. And look at that big old two or three millimeter rotor on the front and uh, four pistons. And uh, yeah, quad piston calipers looks like 180 millimeters on the rear. So this is solid. You have you know, most of your stopping power comes from that front wheel there. So that's, oh uh, yeah, that's and, some good and, stuff. And let's not forget, this is a class three mountain bike. That is pretty this wild. This is a 28 <laughs> yeah. miles an hour mountain bike. I I like those type of mountain bikes. Yeah, and that, I mean, that does really make it a great fit for, you know, like you said, if you're commuting around town and riding in the city for a lot of the time, but you also like to get out and adventure. It looks like uh, you could probably mount uh, like a, a rack on there if you wanted to, or fenders, but you know, for, for a mountain bike, probably not necessary. That can be kind of nice if you're, you're doing both commuting and adventuring, but. Uh, we already have sold one of these to someone who's planning to use it as a commuter during mm -hmm. the week and taking it on trails on the weekend. So uh, he's already installed a rack on the back of it. Um, so it's, it can be done. And, and with that gearing, you pretty much can climb anything that's. that's yeah, fun. that's that's super wide. What is that up to? That's gotta be close to 50. 40 teeth on that big one. Yeah, I haven't counted it, but I, and I have the spec on this. I will share it with you for your review. Uh, that's a great system uh, with the 85 newton meter of torque, 28 miles an hour, uh, Bosch, and then with that gearing, you pretty much can climb anything Colorado mountains will try. Oh yeah, to. oh yeah, that's a solid fit. The, um, and the final product that they released is the Scrabble bike. Now. There are certain things about this bike that I really like. First of all, it comes in a small, medium, large, and extra large. So we can accommodate a variety of riders on this. But again, wider handlebars. This is even wider than my own 44 millimeter. I believe this is 46 or 48. With the flare out handlebars, um, great gearing on this. GRX, Sharam GRX uh, group oh, set yeah. on the back. That's a great group set. This is a this is a great bike for somebody who wants that gravel feel, but also ride it in the city. So very capable, class three, 28 miles an hour bike. I like how on all of these bikes, uh, the integration of the motor is great. I mean, they've got this extra protective sort of shielding underneath the motor on the bottom bracket there. So it helps, you know, keep it protected, keep it clean. A lot of Bosch mid drives, it's just the motor in the bottom bracket. So, you know, it gets all muddy and dirty, can get bumped on stuff. So that's really nice. I mean, they got the slap guard on here. It's a really polished product. Like it, it looks nice. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned, all four bikes come with FSA crank sets. Ah. So that's a that's a nice package. 
for for this at, at this price point so that's what makes these a great value union one is which is they're calling entry level which in my mind is is more than an entry level bike retails for thirty five hundred dollars the other three models top out at forty one hundred and when you compare to what else is available in the marketplace those are some great value for the components you're getting for the motor you're getting and the battery that comes with these bikes and i'm, I'm glad you brought that up for the price because uh, i've seen some people talking on our forums about the new diamond bike e-bikes and one thing that people have brought up is like is that kind of a high price for what you're getting because th that's a price you might pay for bikes that are you know dealer supported and have a huge network like trek or giant or something and you, you're one of the first dealers to get diamond back that's and right. there's there's been kind of some issues just concerns about like how much supply do they have and how many dealers are actually going to get them and so do you think there's going to be much concern with i guess dealer support i mean if you know if you get it here and you live in denver you're set you can just come into your sure, shop sure but if you're someone that travels a lot that could be an issue for some folks well i've spoken with diamond back about these bikes and they're making a commitment to this brand they are focusing on this brand and the other thing that about it is they are working with their elite dealers mm -hmm. so th so they want to make sure there is plenty of support available for these bikes now the demand has been huge when i was talking to them about reordering they've already depleted their the first few containers because wow. all the dealers are very excited about these and mm -hmm. they're taking them in and uh but i do know that there are more bikes coming our way and there are Hopefully they will even expand the product line into maybe full suspension, but that's too early to talk about that. I, I can't wait till you ride it and you tell me what you think. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super pumped. Uh, so I'm going to be I'm going to be doing a full review on the Union Two, but I'm planning to just ride all of these bikes. You know, test them out, see what I think. And yeah, you know, Diamondback's a huge name. They've been around for a long time, so to get to try an e-bike from them, pretty exciting. Pretty good stuff. Okay, starting out here, we're going to go on the gravel bike here. This one is the Current, right? And it's, you know, like how, how I was saying, it's still the performance line speed here, 28 miles per hour, class three. Got the Kiox display on here. This is only a large, so I'm gonna ride the large. It's not the perfect fit for me. It's, you know, up to 6'1", rider size, and I am six foot three, but that's okay. You know, it's close enough, we'll make it work. So I've already got the display powered up here. You can adjust your assist levels up and down, all the way up to turbo, all the way down to eco, and it changes the color of that bar right there, and then that bar will, that shows the motor wattage. So as you're riding, it'll give you an idea of how much the motor's helping out. 95% battery life, so we got plenty of range. It is really nice that they put the percentage on there uh, instead of it being like a, you know, just a four or five bars like a lot of displays have. So yeah, it's uh, let's take it for a spin. It's really lightweight. I mean, I can just pick it up with one hand easy. I, I think they weigh around 45, 48 pounds for these. Not too shabby. So starting out here, I'm just I just got an eco, which is the easiest level of assist. Now, even though this is just the large frame. I don't even have the seat up all the way, and I'm, I still can extend my legs fully, which is really nice. You know, it, it, as a tall rider, this is pretty rare for me to be able to do this. Nice, you know, forward, aggressive riding position here. The, the handle grips feel great. It's this uh, sort of like a rubberized feeling wrap that they've got on it. Brakes feel nice and responsive. Uh, these are smaller rotors on this one, 160 millimeter rotors on it, where we had, you know, 203 on the mountain bike, and. I think there were 180s on the commuters. So in eco, very responsive as Bosch is. Uh, it's, it's a little bit loud. Uh, and you know, that's just an eco. Let's, uh, we're gonna switch it all the way up to turbo. Pretty, pretty loud which which is fine you know there it is the speed version of the motor there so let's uh, let's uh, speaking of speed let's uh, let's crank that up a little bit so we got it in turbo i am going to shift us on up to a little bit higher gear a little bit clanky on the gear but not too bad that's uh 
go ahead and give this straight away a try here. We're up in, uh, what is that, like gear eight probably? You're shifting up. Yeah, uh, there's 28 miles per hour. So the motor has cut off. Uh, I can feel the motor, you know, stop giving assist once we hit that 28 mile per hour. That's one thing that sets these Bosch bikes apart from, uh, I mean, like the Sondors and Super 73 that I was riding yesterday, where you can, you know, you can unlock the motor. You can go way faster than 28, but Bosch is pretty strict about, you know, sticking to regulations. Class 3 e-bike, 28 miles per hour is the cutoff. Feels nice and stable here. No, no frame flex. Can no hand it pretty easy. Yeah, no, it feels good. It feels really solid. I haven't ridden on a good gravel e-bike uh, in, well, actually ever. This is probably one of the better ones that I've ever tried out. So it's, it feels awesome. I like the the tires. They're they're pretty grippy, but still, you know, small enough to be pretty wide and nimble. We are going to. See what we can do speed-wise here. So we're we're turning on to Sixth Avenue down here in Denver. I've got it in turbo, you know, and going up this hill, we're we're accelerating up this hill. It's, as Hashman was saying, it's got uh, 85 newton meters of torque. So this thing is pretty peppy, pretty peppy. A nice thing with these Bosch mid drives is they do actually have shift detection built in. So they will cut off the power just a little bit when you shift. Pretty nice. It helps to, you know, less wear and tear on your drivetrain. All right, look at that. We're going 26. Okay, so we've got the Union One here. So this is the not quite as premium commuter, right? It, uh, it doesn't have lights on it. It's got the Perion display instead of the Kiox. But still pretty, I mean, you, you got the nice fenders on here. These are uh, like aluminum alloy, pretty wide. They're well mounted. Got the, the rack, what do we got? Max 10 kilogram. That is actually kind of interesting. So the, the max weight on here is only 10 kilograms, which, uh, well, is not a lot. I mean, what is that, like 25 pounds, uh, something thereabouts? A typical rack, the max weight's gonna be you know, 25 or so kilograms. You can't quite, I wonder why that is. I mean, it is, you know, mounted on the fender here and it's not actually attached to the top of the frame or anything there, only on, on the bottom there. So that could be why. I'll have to look at the rack on the other one and see, but hey, let's see, you know, we'll take it for a spin here. Uh, see how it does. The power button for Kirion is up there on the top. They always start out and off. So let's ride it that way, starting out. Uh, this is the extra large frame. So it should fit me quite well. We'll raise the seat up. Uh, yeah, that ought to do it. I uh, I already love the handlebars on here. They're super wide. I'm not sure you know, what the measurement is on it, but for for someone you know, a bigger rider here, having that nice wide sweep, uh, it helps out. It can be a lot more comfortable. You don't feel like you're kind of pinching your arms in. The grips are really soft. It's some some sort of ergonomic rubber. Uh, they are locking, so they don't twist around. Feels, uh, feels really good. And I think we have the Dior shifters on here so we can, uh, yep, we do. So you have like the, the two-way high under here. You can pull it with your index or push it with your thumb. A really nice for you, you're keeping a finger on the brakes or something like that. We are striding like a bike right now. We're, I mean, we're maintaining 12 miles an hour. I'm not really even putting any effort into it here. Forward, forward seating position. I could raise the saddle up just a smidge more, but this, this feels pretty good right here. Very smooth pedaling experience. I mean, Dior, really, really solid stuff from Shimano. All right, so we are going to uh, go straight through here and let's bump that up to Eco. Even in Eco, this motor really has a, a, a lot of pep to it. This is my first time riding the Gen 4 of these performance line speeds from Bosch. So 
It is a little surprising to me how loud they are. You know, that's not a Diamondback thing, it's just a Bosch thing. But let's, uh, let's see if we can get, uh, get some speed going. We're just in Eco. And we're already up there to about 25 miles an hour. So it's feels feels solid, feels good. I love these handlebars. The tires are pretty wide on here. Those look like they're probably uh, I don't know, maybe a, a 2.2 inch or so. So good good volume of air. We've got those 180 millimeter brake rotors up there. And these are the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. So that's another difference between this one and the Union 2. Is over there you get the more powerful uh, the, or, uh, the Shimano's, and I think they have a bigger rotor on the front. We'll, we'll try that out in a minute. All right, we're gonna bump this on up to turbo. Give it a try, no hands in it. Very solid, no, no frame flex or anything like that. Feels nice and stable. Uh, these are, you know, sport saddles. They're pretty narrow, so it's not a super comfy. But for if you're going to be pedaling actively, that's that's a really great fit, and I think you will on a bike like this. These the performance line speeds from Bosch are a great fit for cyclists who are active, who like to pedal, who like to get some exercise. It helps out. You have super responsive motor that's reading torque, cadence, and rear wheel speed over a thousand readings per second. So one of the most responsive ones that you can get. All right, so we are. Uh, we're turning onto 6th Avenue now. We're doing the same loop we did on the gravel bike. See how fast we can get going here. The gearing range is not as wide on this bike. So we're, we're all the way up in the top gear and we're able to hit 28 miles per hour. Still have a pretty decent cadence. So I'm gonna put a little more effort in. We'll see if we can ride past the so the, the motor is uh still helping me out right now okay yeah i can feel that it stopped but riding past the motor is quite a quite a bit of exercise i'm starting to huff and puff a little bit and it does feel like there's just a little bit of drag when you are riding that pass that fast and the motor stops helping out. You can feel just a little, a little bit of funkiness as you're cycling the cranks. It's pretty minor. It's improved a lot from older versions of Bosch motors that had a smaller chain ring with reduction gearing. And there was actually quite a lot of drag if the motor was off or if you rode past this point of assistance. So, uh, very impressed with the, the, the feel of the bike. It's very smooth, Paul. I mean, the Bosch drive system is always great, and you got premium stuff from Shimano and everything. Very well-built bike. Um, it's kind of a bummer that when you're paying, you know, what are these, uh, 3,500 bucks that uh, you don't get lights by default, you know, and the, the rear rack weight, that's a, that's just not very much, you know, 10 kilograms. But still, you know, if you're, you don't have to carry a whole lot of weight and maybe you already have lights of your own that you like to use then that could be a good fit for you so we are going to try out the union 2 next so we can compare them back to back i got uh, both the union 1 and union 2 out here so we can look at them back to back because i've noticed a, a couple strange differences here and uh the shop guys were telling me some more stuff so uh this is kind of cool they've got it's like a reflective tape that's on the back of the fender here and it's also on the insides of the forks right there and then you're know, right in there so that uh, when you shine a light at it it reflects really well so nice little extra safety touch and it's got one on the underside of the top tube right down here that's also reflective you can't see that much of it from the side so that's kind of an odd choice in my opinion but it's it's kind of nice on this bike because it's it's really grippy this reflective tape so if you're picking the bike up it's a little bit easier to hold on to it the, the lettering on here is even like raised out just a little bit. So nice, nice texture feel. When you come over here to the Union 2, so this one's 4,100, a little bit more premium. You get uh, the Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, bigger rotors up there, 180 millimeter, better stopping power. I think it's the same 
It looks like the same Dior group set on there. So this one, instead of having reflective tape up here, it's just got this you know, yellow stuff here. It doesn't have the texture on it, but it's still pretty bright. You can see it on the insides of those front forks there. So that helps to just a little bit more with the side visibility. You know, you got the reflective striping and it does have the reflective tape on the back there. And so here we've got the integrated lights. There's the tail light there. And then up front, we've got a headlight and they're saying 500 lumens. So pretty, uh, yeah, pretty darn bright. That's not too bad. Kiox display, a little bit better. And the rear rack is also 10 kilograms. So yeah, you're working with about 25 pounds there, but a little bit more premium components. And I think this one had a more powerful battery. I don't know if it says on here, but I think it was 400 watts, you know, the, the power tube 400 and the power tube 500 over here. Okay, I got the extra large on the Union 2 as well, so I can bump the seat post up a little bit more. Right about there should be pretty decent. Notice this is uh, kind of sticking out here. See if we can get that back in there. There we go. Okay, we'll fire up the Kiox. They're not quite as easy to see in direct sunlight as the Pirianus one downside. They are smaller and it's your color instead of grayscale, but still pretty good. They got good contrast ratios and everything. You can go through tons of readouts on these two. We're not, we're not really gonna mess with it since we're you know, we're just looking at the bikes today, but it is nice to have all of that. You get a little bit more features and everything. We're just gonna ride the same route that we've been doing on the other bikes. And starting out, I am uh, leaving the motor off and I'm just gonna pedal it like a bike for, for you know, a moment or two here. It does, it, it feels basically exactly the same as the Union in terms of the ride feel and everything. You know, we got the same uh, mostly the same components on here, uh, you know, aside from uh, you know, having the Kiox and a little bit better brakes from Shimano, two finger levers on here. I think the ones on the other one were three fingers, so a little bit easier to grip, but these are, these are some really high performing stuff. You can see that 180 millimeter rotor right up there. All right, let's go ahead and kick that motor up. A uh, really comfy feel. You know, it's just a, just a little bit leaned forward. Make sure we don't got any cars coming here. It'd be, uh, looks like it'd be pretty easy to, you know, swap in an adjustable stem if you wanted to. You could, you know, raise that up a bit. Get more of an upright seating position if you need that for, you know, helping out your back or anything like that. Gonna bump that on up to turbo. And you know, thanks to the guys for charging all these up for me. You get more power, more oomph when you are riding at it uh, with, with a fully charged battery. Any e-bike, as the battery starts to decline, you get a little bit less power, a little bit less torque. Speed tops out a little bit lower. I don't know if the lights are on by default or not. I don't think that they are. Uh, not on by default. Which is kind of interesting. Typically with Bosch systems, the lights get turned on by default, but it's, I guess that's not really a Bosch thing. It really just depends on how the manufacturer set it up. So Trek bikes, for example, that use Bosch, all of those, the lights are on by default. And actually you can't even turn the lights off on a lot of Trek bikes, it depends on where you buy it. So, okay, let's uh, fire up the lights here. Uh, we'll hit the lights button on the display. So there's a little light indicator that turns on. And then there you go. Oh, that is, that is pretty bright. Um, it's, you know, there's no side cutouts on this light here, so you, you don't get that extra side visibility, which would be nice to have, but it's still quite bright, you know, so an integrated light is better than nothing. And then there's the, the tail light back there. It's positioned low enough that if you have stuff on the rack, it shouldn't block it, which is good. Being down low is not ideal though, because if you are, you know, back here in a car, the, the hood of your car might block being able to see it. and. It's not super bright, you know, you got two LEDs there. It does shine pretty decent from the side. So, you know, it's, I think it's a case where you know, having the lights is better than not having them. I mean, and here it is mounted on the fork, so it turns when you steer. So that's, that's always good. It makes it a little bit easier to see at night. So we're gonna jump back on and we'll leave the lights on and ride back around to the shop. Very, very nice, smooth. It, it, it feels great. Um, it, it's a really nice bike, you know, is it, $4,100 of really nice bike? Eh, 
have a soft spot for the Diamondback brand since the, the first bike I owned as a kid was a Diamondback mountain bike. But, you know, I can't help to, but to compare this to uh, like some of the premium bikes, uh, like so Gazelle, for example, I reviewed the Gazelle C8 about a month ago, which was cheaper than this, it was only 3,500, you know, and on there you, uh, you get the Gates carbon belt and you get the internally geared hub, Shimano Nexus, super awesome shifting experience. You know, quality, I think that one had Shimano hydraulic disc brakes and everything on there too. Rack that supported actually higher than the normal. So, you know, instead of 25 kilograms, it was like 27 or 28. Whereas here you've only got, you know, 10. No, so that's kind of a bummer. And you know, the lights on Gazelle bikes are way more premium. Really good side cutouts, even brighter. And like a big wide four LED on the rack. So to me, it's like, uh, is, is, is this really that? A better bike you know these have bigger tires on them quite a bit more volume of air so they're a little bit more comfort there uh, but you know on the gazelle you get uh like the the suspension right you get that monoshock suspension up front suspension seat post it's not a lot but it's something so i guess to me really the big question is you know is diamondback going to deliver on really really sticking with the brand expanding their dealer network because that's one of the nice things when you pay this kind of money for a more premium bike is that you you get that you know really good dealer support so i mean who knows you know it's it might be kind of too early to say at this point although if you live somewhere that's got a dealer and then you know you're, you're set on support so that can that can take away a lot of the risk and worry there so. okay last one of the diamondbacks for the day this is the response the hardtail mountain bike uh, Save the best for last because I, I love bikes like this. It's got some more upgraded. You know, we got the 203 millimeter rotors up there, Magura hydraulic disc brakes. Oh, what group set were we working with back here again? Uh, so Dior and uh, what that is a huge first gear on the cassette back there. Nice range, so we'll be able to climb pretty much anything. We'll bump the seat post on up here. I think we got a large, yes, a uh, large, so it's uh, just a, a smidge small for me. But if the gravel bike was any indication, then this should be a great fit. So we'll hit power, fire up the Kiox. We are going to do the same route we've been riding the rest and you know, just like the others, we'll start off with the display off. Ride it like a normal bike for a few blocks here. And it looks like we're working with, looks like the same handlebar, you know, nice, nice wide handlebar. It's got these same ergonomic rubber locking grips that the other three bikes have had. So it looks like they're reusing quite a few components across them, which is a great move that can, you know, help to keep costs down and stuff. Got kind of standardized the ride feel experience. The shocks feel pretty nice and responsive. And I can see there, uh, we got a compression adjust there on the right, you adjust the air pressure on the left. Can't really see from up here, but I'm I'm guessing we've got some more adjustments that you can make to it, probably for a uh, you know, like preload and rebound. Actually, let's stop and take a look. There's your rebound adjust there on the bottom of the right shock. Got anything over here? So pretty pretty good stuff. You know, nice and adjustable. Looks like yeah, I mean, you're probably getting what 100 millimeters of travel would be my guess on that jump back on it here these are some some pretty big tires uh probably probably plus size is what we're working with up there so you get more volume of air a little bit more comfort still feels pretty lightweight and nimble this bike does feel a bit heavier than the other ones i'm guessing it's probably the heaviest out of all of them all right fire up the old motor It, it feels very similar to the unions, the, the commuter ones. The, the more comfortable for sure, having that suspension up there and the bigger tires. I think that is probably the biggest difference. Yeah, one wheels. Yeah. Love those things. So, so definitely more comfortable. It's even the large for me at six foot three feels really nice. I can extend my legs just about all the way down and I don't even have the saddle all the way up here. Frame still feels nice and solid no flex really a nice feeling ride experience and 
you know, remember what Houseman was saying, this bike is designed to cater towards people who do 80% of their riding in the city, and then on the weekends they want to go out and play, you know, go, go adventure, find some trails, do some exploring. So you can ride it for a commuter and you can ride it for an adventure bike. If you're riding it for a commuter though, it's you kind of need fenders and lights and stuff like that. You know, you can add on your own lights pretty easy, but fenders in a rack, that's going to cost extra and that'd be kind of annoying to have to put them on and take them off, depending on what kind of riding you're doing for your, your fun riding. It feels like a really awesome bike. I'm not sure if it's $4,100 of awesome or not, but overall I think they did a, you know, a really solid job. I'm gonna take the sidewalk here so we can go over some bumps and stuff. So it, it feels nice and nice and comfy. The suspension does a great job. I can definitely see this being a great fit for doing a little bit of a, bit, a little bit of trail and adventuring, exploring. And having that having that 85 newton meters of torque is so nice. Really, really good acceleration on it. We're uh, we're at about like halfway through the cassette and you know, just takes a few seconds to get it pedaled all the way up to 20 there. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Push on up towards 28 miles an hour. Pretty easy to get there. Feels nice and smooth. And solid performance from the brakes too. I mean, I'm I'm only braking with one hand since I'm holding the camera and it still has no problem stopping. That is a three shift on the thumb lever there for shifting down into easier gears. You can you know, dump a whole bunch of gears at once if you need to. And away we go. Pretty loud shifting back there. I don't know if you can hear that clunking and clanking on camera. It is a, a new bike. That's, that's pretty common. Things start to kind of loosen up and break in a bit after you've ridden it a bit more, but uh, this doesn't have very many miles on it. I think the shop just got it last week. Okay guys, so that is it for today. Checking out those new e-bikes from Diamondback. Really liked them all. You know, it's, we'll see we'll see if it's worth it for the cost for you know all the stuff that you get and everything i'm excited to hear what you guys think if you've had a chance to test ride and what you thought about the video i'm going to be creating a post on our forums to talk about this and share some more of my thoughts i'll be linking the spec sheets from diamondback for all the components and so you can you know check us out on the forums there jump in and join the conversation let us know what you thought about it ask me any questions that you had and i will be doing some full reviews on these diamondback bikes in the future stay tuned for those all right guys thanks for watching and i'll see you out here next time